Hi and welcome to Watch The Time. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video, especially about watches. Uh, there's been a lot going on. Everyone knows all, all of the things that are going on and that's affected my kind of uh, watch buying process. Uh, I've had a few things crop up as well where I've spent all of my money on other things, this being one of them. And this is just an update for the people that follow my channel and I do a bit of radio control stuff and uh, I bought myself a new transmitter so I just thought I'd do a quick review on it. I'm not going to go through uh, all the specs on this radio or anything like that. This is going to be the things that are important to me and the reasons why I um, chose it. I will do a wristwatch check for you. There's the Citizen Promaster Diver which I absolutely love. Uh, it was a second hand bargain I got um, all beaten up but it's um, it keeps absolutely perfect time I've actually regulated this now so it's within two seconds a day um, it's just brilliant brilliant loom just faultless watch um, for 100 quid there you go so yeah this is about my new radio so I'm gonna quickly go over first of all why have I changed well I had a Futaba uh, 16 SC fantastic radio color touchscreen I had all the things I thought I wanted but there's one thing that Futaba have missed for a long time now and three things happened to me which made me decide no I want to get this sorted and that is basically the lack of model match feature on Futaba radios so if you've got a basic Futaba radio like this which runs on 2.4 gig it will you bind the receiver to the radio and then you can put that receiver in any plane and it will fly any plane the downside of that is you can fly a plane on the wrong on the wrong model now on three occasions i had once on my f3a olympus pattern ship uh, it was on acrowatt i noticed just before i left the pits so that was okay my what for foamy i i had that on something else i can't remember what i think it was on acrowatt and the worst one i had was my t-rex 700 helicopter now you're talking about a grand's worth there um, of, of helicopter now what happened was I booted it all up, it seemed to work okay, it did all, made all the right noises, but it just made one odd bleep that I didn't really, I'd not sort of heard before. So I walked out to the flying field, put the heli down, was about to, you know, just flick it into idle up and, and go, and it made another bleep, the transmitter, and I thought, or oh, the, the heli made a bleep, I can't remember which, and I was like, oh, it's never done that before, and it prompted me to look at the radio again. I mean, everything seemed to be working okay, but it was on the wrong model, and it's just unforgivable that Futaba still allow this to happen in their radios. So I wanted something that was a little bit more uh, safe. Um, you know, you've only got to lose one model, and you, you know, you've done the, the price of a radio, so ultimately, I thought I'd invest in a new system. Now obviously Spectrum was uh, something I looked at because it has model match and I already had a Spectrum DX7 Gen 2, great radio, um, but I've always got this little niggly feeling in the back of my mind that you know, there are definitely more issues with Spectrum than Futaba, so I, I kind of dismissed Spectrum early on. Then I found Jetty and that's what I've ended up with. So I'm going to open it up and show you the radio that I bought. It was second hand but new. Uh, as in it had never been out of the house and actually used it was bought for a project which uh, never came off the ground so a i got it for a good price and it was in absolutely mint condition so i'm just going to get the radio out it comes in the box um, so that's what i've gone for the uh, jetty ds16 it's not the carbon version that is just a a, a overlay although a, a very expensive 50 euro overlay it's basically it's basically a sticker um, that gives a carbon effect, but uh, I think it looks quite nice, and I, I just didn't like the plain black front of the radio. The first thing I noticed about the Jetty, and one of the things that sort of drew me to it, was the build quality. I mean, this thing is built like a, literally like a tank. It's, it's uh, machined out of one big billet of aluminium, and there's a great video on YouTube where you can see it being machined out. It's got Hall Effect sensor gimbals, which feel lovely, um, and they're uh, very customizable. You can rotate the gimbals. You can change from obviously mode one to mode two. I fly mode one, or I actually fly uh, mode two as well, but that's another story. Um, so, but predominantly I fly mode one, so I just swap the gimbals, and you literally take the whole gimbal out and swap it over. And even that's a nice process on this radio. I think on the, the newer versions you don't have to do that, but everything was designed to, to do that. 
Um, so build quality is just absolutely fantastic. The downside of that is the weight. Now I will get the weight out of the way first and I'm going to compare it to that Futaba, just a sort of a cheap basic Futaba over there. So this is the Jetty and it is 1230 grams. Put the Futaba on, 880 grams. So a fair chunk of aluminium there and it, and it you know it does make a difference it's definitely a heavier radio but um, it's got these nice grips on the back and to my mind it, it feels nice in the hand I quite like it and obviously there is a tray version you can use with this and you can use a neck strap I tend not to use a neck strap I have tried it with this and it's quite nice and comfortable but generally I don't bother and it, it works just fine as it is obviously I've changed the sticks to my preferred style of stick the ones that came with it are okay and obviously these are the sticks that you can basically put switches and dials on the ends but as I'm a thumber I can't do that. With regards to the uh, the setup of the radio and the, the system it uses, it uses a, it's this duplex 2.4 gig system. Uh, the, the newer versions of this radio also come with a 900 megahertz backup system in but this one has four aerials all around here. Um, it's proper um, you know it's got two aerials on the receivers and it picks up completely separately to um, two channels and all of that can be seen in the uh, telemetry information you can actually see each individual aerial how it's performing and you can record that and then look at it later in Jetty Studio on your computer. Now one thing you will need to get with this right from the get-go is one of these and it's a basically it's a USB Jetty updater so and you use that to update things like Vario's, um, telemetry modules, uh, receivers, etc. And so basically for doing firmware updates of all your paraphernalia you need one of these. You get a lead with the radio for plugging it into a computer, that's just a basic USB lead, but you do need to also get one of these. It's, it's essential. When it comes to updating on the computer it's fine, it's a very simple process and it's fully supported on Mac and PC. I use a Mac so it's uh, perfect for me and it's a, an absolutely painless easy system to use. So I'm just going to power on the radio here. It's a press and hold until the green light comes on here and then it comes on and it's basically saying what the model is, do you want to start the transmitter in this model so I can press yes or I can change it to a different model. So we'll change it to, uh, let's change it to something else. Hi Gary, normal. Strike to DLG. So um, a couple of things I've got there. Firstly, it, it says you can get the, com the uh, computer. It is a computer. So you can get the computer to say anything you want. Um, basically, you create a WAV file. It's easy to do. You put it on here, and so you can have any switch saying anything that you want. Basically, you can just design it all yourself, and that comes in really handy for certain things. One of the things I've got, which is a, it's called a Lua app. So this is Lua compatible. So it's an app writing software based system people write apps for these um, one of the apps that you can get is a model announcer so when you turn it on and go onto the model you can set a time and after a few seconds it, it will tell you uh, what the model is that you've got on so again with regards to you know actually being able to get off the ground with the wrong model on this it's pretty unlikely I would say you'd have had to be um, having a really bad day to do it because when you if you buy if you turn it on and you're not on the right model it will say this isn't the right model do you want to bind to this model so you can technically bind to it but you know you're going to be looking at the screen you can see quite clearly what the model is and it also announces the model to you and as I say that's something I set up manually but um, a great feature um, the screen is fantastic it's a it's a um, monochrome screen but it is visible in direct sunlight um, and it's also backlit so it's you know, it's perfectly visible in all conditions, which is fantastic. Um, as you can see there, I know I've got a few reflections, but you've got lots of telemetry information. This particular model has a Vario, so you've got the temperature inside the model. You've got the um, I've got the relative altitude there. You've got receiver voltage, antenna strength, and percentage of data transferred backwards and forwards. 
um, you know so that there's lots of information you can then go into functions and see that data um, on screen um, at a later date so if you go into the data analyzer I can select a log file so if I select a log file from I don't know, say the 9th of August let's have a look see what's on there nothing uh, let's try that one so that's a log file from my uh, discus launch glider I can click on that and then I've got all I've all I'm going to show is the relative altitude and it will display that on a graph um, and you can go along and you can see where that's the launch and then that's the, the glide um, and all that information is displayable on here or on your computer at a later date and again very easy and simple to do that um, with regards to the functionality I say the gimbals are probably the best I've ever used um, the switches are all positive and nice um, I wouldn't say there's anything special they're pretty much the same as the Futaba switches but they all work really well you can change what the switch does you can disable it you can drop in new switches you can change a switch to act like a button rather than a switch you can have sprung loaded switches you can have switches that are fit that have got a, like a, a movable click and a spr spring as well you can get lockable switches um, there's loads of different things you can do and these are all plug and play so you, very easy to swap out these switches um, the red one there is my throttle cut that's just an aluminium sort of cover I've got on that that's always my throttle cut um, obviously you can get the um, all the switches to announce different things this one is a glider so thermal landing normal and then you've got uh, snap flaps speed normal so you got all, di all different things altitude, you, zero feet. it just announced the altitude there and the reason it did that is because I've also got um, it's got accelerometers accelerometers built in so if I tilt this altitude zero feet it tells me the altitude um, and you can set the accelerometers up altitude, to do zero feet. anything uh, even fly your plane now the trims are in what I would call an awkward position and it takes a bit of getting used to where the trims are um, because I'm used to a Futaba where I'd have a trim here and a trim here um, but they're all in a little bunch there so that takes a bit of getting used to but the system also has something called auto trim whereby you don't use the trimmers at all you just flick a switch while you're flying straight and level and of course if you're flying straight and level and you're holding on say uh, aileron so you're holding the aileron on to keep the, the plane level when you instigate auto trim it will start moving it back and then so you'll naturally to keep the plane level will move the stick back until you get to the point where it's flying straight and level without you touching it and then you just disengage the auto trim and you're done obviously on the throttle you can have a smooth throttle like I have or you can have a ratchet it's up to you I just have a smooth uh, I like the menu system and navigating the menu system it's just a button to get in and then you've got a, a, a twiddly dial and a button to press so it's nice and simple and then you've got these functions here and you've got corresponding buttons to use and there's an escape button to always get you back uh, control wise we've got sliders on the side all the usual sort of sprung loaded two position switches three position switches and as I said if you want if you wanted say these two to be three position switches for instance you can swap them out for three position switches I say it's plug and play and um, very simple to do so a lot of the stuff on here you might think might be a bit gimmicky and um, you know I suspect that a lot of it is uh, quite gimmicky but the functionality of this radio is astonishing I mean it, it can do pretty much whatever you want and if it don't somebody will write a program that, that lets you do that um, it's just astounding what it will do so one of the things that I've been doing recently is I'm learning the C schedule so I'm just going to change models so I've just changed to the Axiom Axiom so it's announced Axiom that's a, a Christophe Passant LaRue uh, biplane it's uh, the small version not the two meter version but it's uh, a, a very good F3A sort of practice plane and I don't do competitions or anything so it's fine by me obviously it's electric uh, learning the C schedule there's about I think there's about I think seven I think it's about 12 or 13 maneuvers that you have to perform in a sequence and seven of those or six or seven of those maneuvers are selectable by yourself so they're different for everybody depending on which ones you've chosen so one of the ways that 
you can use this radio and the functions to your advantage is you can basically um, set up a voice files or create the voice files and then um, assign them to a switch and then it will play the voice files for you. So when I'm flying uh, I take off and I flick the switch Slow roll. and it tells me the manoeuvre slow roll. Inverted with one roll. Inverted with one roll. Inverted two and a half turn spin. Exit square loop with a half rolls. Stall turn quarter rolls. Knife edge below 30 feet for four seconds. Hourglass with half roll on the top line. Two outside square loops from the bottom. Inverted rectangular figure eight under 50 feet. Knife edge 45 degrees climb with snap roll. Small square flat circuit below 30 feet. High alpha knife edge with half roll at center. Circuit and land. So there you go, that's the, the complete C schedule that I've chosen. And, uh, you know, that's not a gimmick at all, that works. And what it does is it helps me obviously remember the next maneuver and it gives me a bit more time to think about uh, linking the maneuvers together and things like that. I mean, I'll come, it'll come to a point where I'll be able to fly the schedule without using that, but basically. Um, whilst you're getting towards the end of a maneuver or you're in the middle of one maneuver you just flick that switch um, it doesn't interrupt your flying in any way and it announces the next maneuver and you can you can have it say as much or as little as you want you can have it explain the whole maneuver to you if you want if you're prepared to spend the time typing out all of the the voice com uh, commands you know that is a really really useful function in my opinion having switches that announce that's nothing new um, you know spectrum have been doing that since they started pretty much um, but again you can have this say whatever you want so a really nice feature um, there's little nice touches things like um, I've got this control here set to um, change the volume uh, control I've also got where I've got a vario I have also got a slider which controls the vario volume because sometimes that can be a bit annoying to yourself and others so I can change the vario you've got all the usual things like timers and um, all the usual functions now although this is a computer it is configured like um, a traditional radio so say for instance we want to look at dual rates and exponential we can just go into fine tuning dual rates and exponential and we'll look at uh, ailerons on this model actually no we'll look at elevator because I need to adjust it anyway so we'll look at elevator so there you can see um, I, don't know, I have got so I've got position one and low two rates. low rates on this so I've got 80 10 low and rates. 70 10 I don't generally use low rates to be honest again very simple you can you just go to what you want to change press on it and you can change if symmetry is highlighted it will change both or you can change that you can clear it you can OK it you can click that and it, it you can get to your servo output screen um, you know it's a very user-friendly uh, system now there's a lot of stuff buried in the system and uh, some of the stuff looks quite complicated how you use it but it's all there to find you know and some of the stuff is in the model setting section so it'll be in there then you've got the fine tuning um, section the advanced property section timers and sensors applications and then your systems and things so it's laid out more like a traditional radio um, more so than say like the Tyrannus with OpenTX that I had I just didn't get on with it because it was more like computer programming than a radio whereas this has got all the functionality of computer programming but it's more like a traditional you know like your your Futaba but receiver wise uh, receivers are about the same price as Futaba fast receivers the only downside is there's no second hand ones and there's no support from third parties so you're not going to go out and buy receivers for you know 15 to 30 quid on this they're a, a, a basic six channel I say basic there aren't they're not really basic they're full telemetry enabled they've got X bus this they're, they're all all their um, receivers technically are 16 channel receivers through X bus um, it's just the, the, the like the Rec 6 for instance has six outputs the 7 has 7 the 9 has 9 the 10 has 10 etc etc um, and then you've got um, all the, the really high-end stuff which has like direct battery inputs and things like that for your big jets and things which I don't I don't use helis gliders and normal planes is what I do 
So your bog standard sort of um, six channel receiver or six output receiver um, is about 67 pounds. Uh, the Varios are a bit expensive, about 70 odd pounds. Uh, some of the telemetry modules are a bit pricey, not horrendous, but you can buy all the, the ones that tell you how much uh, battery you've used and things like that. Uh, they're called MUIs, I think. Um, they're not too expensive, they're not too bad. Um, I say the receivers are, I think, a reasonable price, but they're not um, available secondhand or generally. You, you very rarely see them. So you're going to be paying full price for your receivers. I think if you go for something like a Jetty Assist receiver, you're looking at a minimum of about £100, but that is a, a, a highly technical and advanced gyro system built in, uh, which I understand are very good. I've not used them. Um, not really my thing, but um, I've not used those uh, as yet, but I probably will at some point in the future. Uh, but I really have no need for something like that. Performance uh, with regards to range and etc. is um, it's just rock solid. Uh, I mean, I've flown as you know, I, I fly line of sight, obviously, so I've flown to you know the limits of my um, my sight where I can just barely see the plane. Um, you know, in excess of 2,000 feet high. Uh, that's a glider obviously and you know a fair distance away as well and the antenna signal strength um, drops to about four by four as opposed to obviously nine by nine is where you're close to it um, so your actual antenna strength drops the further you go away but four by four is fine uh, it's this figure here and that basically tells you the percentage of data that's sent to the receiver and received back and what you're looking for there is a hundred percent you want all the data to go to the receiver and all of the data to come back and that's what this duplex system is all about and so far um, I, I get pretty much a hundred percent even at, at long range I've never had a brownout I've never had an issue um, you know I can't fault it with regards to that I've done range checks where I've just walked and walked and walked and uh, I've not yet got to the edge of it it's um, it's range so all in all, uh, a bulletproof radio. I had one slight issue the very first time I used the radio, and that was uh, a bit weird. It had got hot, very hot, and the throttle just didn't activate the, the throttle. Everything else worked. You could see on the servo monitor, everything else worked, but the throttle didn't. I tried lots of different things, and in the end, I just did a, a calibration of the throttle stick, and it worked. Now, I've heard people say that because their call effect gimbals it could have been heat uh, had thrown the calibration out so it was saying the throttle's not calibrated correctly but it didn't tell me that i just had to sort of try that and once i've calibrated it's fine and it's been fine ever since the other thing it could have been this was something to do with the fact that i'd mode changed it now i'm pretty sure i calibrated after i mode changed it but it could have been something to do with that and um, but as i say it's been absolutely faultless since then um, the battery in it is a 5.2 amp single cell battery. Uh, it lasts for ages. I've, I sort of fly for a whole weekend and this will still be sitting at about 70 odd percent. Um, so no problems with battery life. And you just charge it through a socket on the top. There you've got a USB and a headphone jack as well. Um, very easy to get the back off and get into this. It's designed to be user friendly with regards to that. Just take the screws off, pop the back off, comes off in one big sheet unclip your battery and then you've got access to everything it's really designed for you to get in there and do stuff if you want to because there are different upgrades you can do um, to improve it or change it to how you want it let's talk about price uh, i paid uh, 950 pound for this as i say it was second hand but in absolutely mint condition it came with two nine rex nine receivers so they're about 100 pound each so technically i paid about 750 for the radio with the case um, I don't think that's an awful lot of money for a, such a good radio when you compare it to some of the Futabas. The 16SZ that I had was about 600, so um, not far short of that. And when it comes to quality and functionality, they're in a different league. There, there is no comparison between this and, say, the, the 16SZ. Um, do I miss the touchscreen and the colour display? Um, absolutely not. The colour display was beautiful indoors and in when it was a bit darker, but outside in the daylight you can't see it at all. This you can see in direct sunlight and it actually gets more visible the more light that hits it. Touchscreen, I kind of, well, I do and I don't miss the touchscreen. 
I like the twiddly dial. The reason I don't miss the touch screen is because this works so well. I think if this didn't work as well, um, then I probably would miss the touch screen, but I actually don't miss it at all. I don't ever go to touch up here. You know, you've got these buttons, you've got everything you need. So no, I don't really miss the touch screen. Um, and everything else is just generally better on this. It's better made. Um, it's got better functionality. Um, little little touches, like say for instance, you're um, you've got a, a plane that pulls hard. Uh, under itself when you're flying knife edge and you want to mix that out so you create a rudder to elevate a mix to mix that out it's a very simple mix to do and you set it at I don't know 10 percent and you try it and then if it's too much or not enough you generally land you change the percentage you fly again you land you, you know you just keep doing that process until you get it so that when you go into knife edge it flies nice and straight well on this, when you first set up the, the knife edge mix, um, you can just very simply set up a, a dial or a slider, um, and a dial's best, to vary the amount of mix that you're needing. So you basically fly the manoeuvre and then you can vary with the dial, the in flight, the amount of mixing. Once you've got it dead absolutely right, then you can land, um, deactivate the, the channel that you're using to adjust your mix uh, and then you're done you know it's it's such a simple thing but it's one of those things you can't do that on a Futaba radio I mean I say I've used the 16 the 14 I've got a T7 I've used an 8J I've used most of the Futaba um, sort of lower end stuff I mean I don't know if anything higher than that does it or not I don't know but um, you know little touches like that are, I think on this are absolutely fantastic um, and I absolutely love it. So I know I've um, gone on a long time on this, but this is this is one hell of a radio. Even the shutdown, <laughs> the way it shuts down is interesting because if you're connected to a plane and you power off, it says, do you really want to shut down? And there's an option to say yes, but it's greyed out for about five seconds. So you can't shut down straight away. So that's a two step process and it won't let you touch that for five seconds. So do you really want to shut down? You know, if say you're checking a fail safe, for instance, you do, but you just have to wait for it to become solid and then you can shut it down. So, a nice safety feature there um, for when you're powering off a model. And generally, when you're powering off a model and you've already powered off the model, this will start bleeping to say that it's lost its signal. Um, you can clear that and leave the radio on, or you can then just power it off. Um, and that's just power and then hit the button straight away. So, it, it's even got a good, good system there. So, as I said, I've, I've waffled on enough now. Um, it's an unbelievable radio. I went for the D16 because the lower ones, the 12s, and I think it's the 12s and the 14s, um, you have to buy thing, you have to buy like modules to get all the full functionality. And basically, I, I think that's a good idea if you don't want all that stuff. But I didn't want a radio that had something in it that it wouldn't do. So um, that's why I went for the 16. Uh, and obviously, there's the 24, the flagship model, um, which is just stunning. Um, but this, uh, for what I paid for it and for what I need, uh, it's just an absolute stunning piece of radio. And as I say, whilst I loved my Futaba radios, I did get, um, you know, a, a bit peeved because um, Futaba have not sorted out the model matching function. Um, and to me, that is unforgivable. And that's why I've, I've you know, changed um, from Futaba. The reason I still have this little Futaba radio here uh, is a bit of an experiment and also it's, it enables me to fly mode 2 and just practice on a, um, a model that I've got set up on mode 2 um, just to keep my hand in more than anything uh, and also that's set up with a FR Sky module in it as a bit of an experiment um, so there you go this is uh, my review on the Jetty DS16 uh, absolutely stunning piece of kit I'm just absolutely loving it I'm learning more and more about it um, every time I use it and um, this is going to be with me now for um, some time so thanks for watching uh, watch the time I know this wasn't a, uh, a, a watch video but there is a watch in it featured um, so thanks for watching like subscribe comment and uh, I'll see you soon cheers bye